at Snapdragon Stadium in San Diego, California. Monster Jam Stadium Championship Series West moves a little bit further south than where they were last weekend in San Francisco as they head to the beautiful city of San Diego. Snapdragon Stadium ready to host the second weekend on this series and Bari Musauer enters this weekend leading the points series. Will he remain there at the end of the weekend or will someone new take it over at the end of week number two? Find out next on Monster Jam. Hello everybody and welcome. Hello everybody and welcome. Hello everybody and welcome. Hello everybody and welcome to San Diego, California. We are here at Snapdragon Stadium for week number two of Stadium Championship Series West. I am the Arizona Motorsports Junkie, formerly known as Who's Ready for Monster Jam. And we are here ready for week number two. We already had our first event of week number two last night on the channel with San Antonio. And now we head out to the other San of the weekend, San Diego. Let's meet the competitors here in this event. We start off with Kayla Blood, Soldier Fortune, had a lot of truck problems last week. We'll see if she can get those figured out. Then there's Mike Christensen, Vendetta, the leader of Team Throttle Monster. Joe Foley, El Toro Loco, a member of Team Scream Racing. He's hoping to have a good year. Jim Kohler, the leader of Team Scream Racing, a two-time World Finals Freestyle Champion. David Olford, Velociraptor, another member of Team Throttle Monster in his first year in a stadium championship series. Colt Stevens, the defending World Freestyle Champion, is on this series as well, a one-time World Finals Champion. Chris Kohler in Monster Mutt, kind of standing pretty tall on this series. He's right there towards the top in the point standings, along with this man, Corey Rummel in Megalodon. Camden Murphy, Bakugan Dragonoid, always a threat for those series point standings. He is right up there towards the top. So is Ryan Anderson, son of a digger, but he is not off to the greatest start. He's gonna need a big weekend here in San Diego. Adam Anderson, Grave Digger, always fun to watch, and he is having a great start to here this season, but not as good as this man, Bari Musauer in Zombie, who is leading the points standings so far after one week he enters snapdragon stadium with a chance at winning stadium championship series west but it all starts here in week number two with racing and starting off racing we have a team scream racing battle jim Kohler and avenger in the near lane joe foley and el toro loco in the far lane ready to get rolling with this awesome racing track it is not wet at all it should be a good track it should be a good weekend hopefully Let's hope that this series gets itself a normal weekend with good scoring and a good, clean two events. No mud, no nothing, just fun Monster Jam action. It starts right now. We have our first Reagan video of the year, Monster Truck Lord, our very first one from him. We started off here in round number one. They are off up bottom of the burn. Pretty good spot here, too. I like this uh, seat where we are. Coming around down the whole shot, pretty even entering the final turn. We've got a great view of the final turn, but Avengers spun out. Joe Foley is your winner for Jim Kohler, man. He had it in the bag and he just overdid it too much. You're the, you're the first race of the night. You have no idea how the track is gonna feel. Unfortunately for Jim Kohler, it was just a little too slick in that turn. He over-rotated it a little too much. Brings us to our next pairing here at round number one. In the near lane, we have Corey Rummel and Megalodon. In the far lane, Colt Stevens, your defending world freestyle champion in Thunder Roras. Now, I also gotta give a quick shout out to Kaz. My boy Kaz is hosting this event. So happy for him. He waited a long time to be able to be the play-by-play -play host for a Monster Jam Stadium event. And here he is today 
such a big deal for him because John Sapinaro had to be in San Antonio. So when you hear the voice in the stadium, it's my boy Kaz. And right now, Colt Stevens has a lead entering the final turn. Will Corey Rummel make up the ground? He will! Colt Stevens spun out. Corey Rummel is your winner. I love this style racing. It has such a high anticipation feel to it. It almost feels very similar to old world finals racing because they can come around the turn, that final turn so close, and then you get your winner off the jump. We now have Bari Musauer and Zombie taking on Michael Christensen Vendetta. Now another part of having Monster Truck Lord's videos is that there's a little bit more breathing room between things going on. So there's a little bit more time to kind of take a breath, allow things to move along. We are rolling here with our third race of the night in round one. And it's a close one, but Vendetta has a lead over Zombie. Will Michael Christensen be able to pull out a big upset in round one? Yes, he is. Bari Musauer, your series leader down in round one. Vendetta has won his first race of the night. What an upset. You've got to love when a driver like Michael Christensen can pull out an upset like that, that is such a game changer. We move into round number two of Monster Jam Racing. And again, as we always do with our 12 truck events, there are four Monster Jam trucks that get automatic buys into round two. The first one's right here, Grave Digger, Adam Anderson. His opponent will be Joe Foley, El Toro Loco. Adam made it to the final round, both racing competitions last weekend and won one of them. So clearly feeling fast on this track, but this is a completely different location. How will the dirt affect him so far? It's giving him a lead. He has a large lead entering the final turn. Going around the final turn quick, and a beautiful pass from Adam Anderson gets him a win in round number two as he will head to the semifinals. And man, this might be a year for Adam Anderson in racing. Keep your eye out on him. Nobody looks faster early on in 2024 than that man right there. The next man so far this season has not had the best racing statistics. David Olfer in Velociraptor, but he is known for his racing, always loves racing. He's going to win races this year. It's only a matter of time. His opponent, Corey Rummel in Megalodon, looked pretty good in round one. Off the line, even into the first turn. Ooh, Olfer getting up on two wheels, but it's not slowing him down. Never took his foot off the gas. And as a matter of fact, it keeps him right in the race. He might even have a slight edge. This final turn will determine it all. Who will cut the corner better? They both cut it well, but it's Velociraptor cutting it the best and a great race here in round number two. That was awesome, and David Olford is your winner. Our next race, Michael Christensen and Vendetta already has one upset tonight over Barney Musauer. Will he have another? His opponent, Camden Murphy. Bakugan Dragonoid, let me tell you, he was able to beat Bari. This is going to be twice as difficult. Camden Murphy is so fast on this track. He doesn't have a racing win yet this year, so it's only a matter of time. One of these drivers is going to be out in round two. I love the way that this track runs. It's fast in every single aspect, and you can see both trucks head to head the whole time. Christensen falling behind. Dragonoid has a lead entering the final turn. If he can keep it smooth, which he can't! He's almost flipped over and now he has! He gives a win to Vendetta. All he had to do was go slow in the turn. He overdid it, he hooked up, and he flipped over. Mike Christensen, with another upset, is going to the semi-final round of racing in Vendetta. Wow! Our next competitor in round number two, another driver we have not yet seen tonight. It is Ryan Anderson, son of a digger. His opponent, Chris Kohler in Monster Mutt. Actually, I think we've seen, I don't remember which one we haven't seen already. To be honest, to be honest with you, have we seen either of these guys yet? I feel like we haven't. I don't know. Well, they're going head to head here in round two. Doesn't really matter. Ryan Anderson, always so fast. He won one of the racing competitions last weekend in San Francisco. How will that impact him this week? He was a little bit behind, but Monster Mutt clipped the ramp, and that's going to take him out of the race for now. 
son of a digger playing smart as he will win the race. Ryan Anderson was behind and Chris Kohler was a little too excited that he was up that much. And unfortunately for him, it cost him a massive upset there. Son of a digger is moving along. We now go to the semi-finals of Monster Jam Racing. The winner of these two races will go to the final round with a chance to win the racing competition tonight. In the near lane, Adam Anderson, Grave Digger. The far lane, David Olford, Velociraptor. Who will win? Velociraptor goes high up on the berm. That's gonna slow him down. How will Adam Anderson react? He reacts by keeping it pretty close. Velociraptor is right there with him. We go to the final turn. Neck and neck, both fishtail a little bit, but Gravedigger had a better turn and a better race in the end, and he is your winner. Adam Anderson goes to the final round. Velociraptor went way too wide in that last turn, and that cost him a chance at a racing win tonight, but still semifinals getting a little bit closer to where Velociraptor wants to be. Now the winner of this race will go to the final round to take on Adam Anderson and Gravedigger. In the near lane, his brother, Ryan Anderson and son of a digger. And in the far lane, the magical story of the night is Michael Christensen in Vendetta. He's already had two upsets, but none of them would be bigger than this. Ryan Anderson, son of a digger. And if he wants to win it tonight, he's going to have to take on bigger upsets each round. But he might have a lead right now. It looks like Vendetta's in the lead going to the final turn. Anderson spun out. Vendetta will cross the line, a winner again! Ryan Anderson is down to Michael Christensen in the semi-final round. A Cinderella story tonight and a lot of luck involved, but it doesn't matter, it has earned him a spot and a chance at winning racing tonight. Let's meet your competitors going head to head for the third racing win of 2024 here on this series. In the near lane, Adam Anderson, Gravedigger, the five-time world finals champion. His opponent, Michael Christensen, the underdog story. He has taken down bigger and bigger competitors each round, but now he has to take down the iconic, the legendary black and green wrecking machine, Vendetta, Gravedigger, here we go, it's San Diego. Will Mike Christensen be able to pull it off or will Adam Anderson continue his dominance in racing? They're close! Adam Anderson is behind entering the final turn! Michael Christensen is making no mistakes right now! Over the line! It's a photo finish! Michael Christensen having the racing night of his life! Unbelievable! I don't know who it was, it might have been Vendetta! Let's look at the replay on the video board. All of Snap... Oh my goodness, Vendetta is your racing winner tonight! And that one was fair and square! He took down the five-time World Finals Champion in a straight-up, no-mistakes race. Vendetta is your racing winner! in San Diego, number one. I do not believe it, but that was unbelievable. What a night of racing for Michael Christensen. What a night of racing in general. That was spectacular from start to finish. I love this racing track, and it is only racing track number three on the year. Only the third time we're seeing it. Such a big win for Vendetta, and that will send us in to the Great Clips Skills Challenge. And kicking us off there is Jim Kohler, Avenger. Man, is it going to be difficult to top any magical moment like what Mike Christensen just provided us, but we'll see if somebody can. Here comes Jim Kohler, ready to pull out of his parking spot. I cannot believe that Mike Christensen grabbed that win. That was spectacular. I know he's a pretty good racer, but something like that is really... I mean, he took down Zombie. He took down Dragonoid. He took down Son of a Digger, and then he took down Grave Digger. I mean, what a night for Mike Christensen. Jim Kohler lining up for the jammer. 
Here he goes to start off our skills challenge. A little sky wheelie, trying to get a slap wheelie, but the truck evened out a little too soon. That's one attempt for Avenger. I wonder why the ribbon boards are red for Avenger. That's strange. What is he gonna do? Is he gonna do a bicycle off the backflip? Jim Kohler? Are you kidding? I don't know. Jim Kohler is not a bicycle man. And off the backflip is a little risky there. Okay, he didn't get the run up he wanted. This might be, um. This might be a little risky. Yeah, he's gonna abandon ship there. I don't blame him. That might be a risky, a risky move to take here. Especially when it's not really clear that he'd be able to win just from doing that because attempt number one wasn't great. But maybe he's trying to solidify that he'd get a victory with that move. He's going to line up for the step up instead. Oh, he had a broken axle. That's why. He had a broken axle in the back left. There was no power back there. That's why he couldn't get the kick he wanted. And that's why he didn't get the run that he really wanted. That's a tough break. And it's a 3.873 for Avenger. Our next competitor is Colt Stevens, Thunder Roarus. Colt Stevens, the defending Monster Jam World Finals freestyle champion. And what a better way for him to celebrate 2023 than with that, getting it in Nashville at Nissan Stadium. And now he is on a hunt for his first ever series championship. Trying to get some points and skills today with a stoppy. Walking that stoppy all the way down, all right. Set it down a little earlier than I would have liked, but it wasn't bad. And I mean, right now with the score to beat it at 3.8, I'd say it's pretty safe that he probably will be able to beat it with no matter what he does next. Going for a bicycle, didn't really have much speed, but he ended up making something out of it. All right, two pretty good hits there. Not the best, not great, but they were decent. They were probably solid six, five, maybe seven. Yeah, all right, 7.293, your new leader here in Snapdragon Stadium, and I have no problem with that. That'll bring up Bari Musauer, Zombie. He got knocked out in round one to the racing winner tonight, Mike Christensen in Vendetta, and now he tries to get his points back up to the top where he, is, where he was entering the weekend here in Skills. Now, something Bari is known for and has done in the past in these events is uh, in the skills challenges do a donut, which you can do. You can either do two moves on two wheels or one donut. Bari has done the donut before. He is a donut world record holder for Monster Jam. So, oh, I, I promise you, I had no idea this was going to happen, but he's doing a donut. <laughs> he doesn't do it all the time, but he does sprinkle it in there. And it's a good way to get a solid seven, get yourself some decent points for the event. And he's having a good one. That's a cyclone right there. Ooh, getting up on two wheels a little bit too. That was a good donut for Zombie. I don't know if that'll be enough to take the lead, but I think it could be close. I really do. I think that has a shot at being close. The score to beat, 7.293. The score for Zombie is... I can't tell doesn't look like it's your new leader looks like a 7.258 so just missed by a little bit unfortunately that is not going to give him the lead but it gets him that solid seven he was hoping for here comes Kayla Blood Soldier Fortune I mentioned it a little bit in the driver introductions before last weekend her truck was having massive electrical problems for whatever reason that truck could not hold together and then it was having just truck problems in general hopefully they got those all sorted out today Got knocked out in round one of racing, so going to need to do something good here, and that's a good move. She was on the ragged edge there a little bit, was teetering on the verge of flipping over, and she was able to save it. So a good move there from Soldier Fortune. And, I mean, that's a good way to try and restart her season. I mean, this had to be just a fresh reset for her after what was a just absolutely forgetful weekend, forgettable weekend last weekend. I mean... No reason to try and pretend like last weekend even happened. Just ignore it and try and start fresh. Going for a popper. Okay. Good little popper there. Still walking it. Still going. It bounced off of the ramp. That was pretty good. 
Solid moves. I'd be looking for like an eight, maybe a solid eight there on that run. That was good. I'd give it the new leader, personally. Solid runs. The score to beat there on the video board from Colt Stevens and Thunder Roars. The score for Soldier Fortune is enough. An 8.568. Not a terrible score. Maybe a little bit too high, but I'm really not too upset about that. She should have taken the lead regardless. She gets herself her first new leader of the year. I'm sure she's happy about that after the horrible weekend she had last weekend. Here comes Joe Foley, El Toro Loco. Now, Joe Foley, so far this season, has not really done too much. Let me remind you of what he did last year in Axe. This man almost won Rookie of the Year in Axe. He had some of the most wild moments in Monster Jam last year. This man is going to have a lot of great moments this year. It's only a matter of time. That Sky Wheelie, though, not going to be won. Talking about forgettable moments, that Sky really certainly at the end of this series will be forgotten. And for a guy like Joe Foley, you know, you're not... First off, you know he's not going to be winning a series. That's not what he's here for. He's here to have fun, and he's here to learn, and he's here to have those moments that will be remembered at the end of the season. A nice slap, really. That thing is just dragging the tail. A good two moves. Second one is obviously a lot better than the first, but... Nothing to complain about there from El Toro Loco. Do I think it'll take the lead? Absolutely not. It's a 6.568. Here comes Corey Rummel and Megalodon. He got knocked out in racing round number two. He always does an interesting skills run, I will say. He doesn't... He always seems to come close to winning skills because he doesn't do the biggest, best moves, but he'll do consistently solid eight runs and occasionally he'll be able to sneak and win in there. That's part of the reason why I feel like Monster Jam should move to more of like a best trick competition for uh, the second one of the night because I really feel like that would be a way better way for every driver to participate. You know, a guy like Barney Musauer is not going to pick up many skills wins. It just allows for a guy like Ryan Anderson really run away with a lot of points in that competition, but a best trick makes it fair for everybody. Nice little popper. He got a lot of air on that thing. And now he's just balancing the shark on the front two wheels, moonwalking it. And that was a good first hit. That was definitely the best move so far of this skills challenge. Seems like he was shut off, but he's refired. Corey Rummel's been doing these stadium series events for a long time now, too. If you think, I mean, he I think he got started back in 2016. It was either 16 or 17 that he got started on a series championship in Rage back then. Then made his way to Pirate's Curse, now in Megalodon, and now he's doing a little... Okay, I like that he walked the rear two wheels down the ramp there. Could have been better and gave a little bit of a taunt to Gravedigger, completely by accident, but the fans appreciated it. This might come close to the top spot, but I don't think it's going to take it. The score to beat right there from Kayla Blood in Soldier, Port, Soldier Fortune. What will the score be for Megalodon? Here it comes. Not enough, 8.143. I'm not entirely upset about that. I really don't think it was... I, I didn't have a strong argument either way, so I don't I don't have any problem with that. Caleb Blood stays in the top spot, but how long will it last while this man's on the track? Camden Murphy, Bakugan, Dragonoid, especially after getting knocked out in round two of racing from his own mistake. He would have won that race against Mike Christensen, but he flipped over in the final turn, and once you do that, you completely surrender all ability to win that race. So Camden Murphy, unfortunately is now going to set up a little revenge tour here in the rest of this event to try and get himself some more points because he's right up there towards the top of this series. He's in the top six, as you saw before the event today. Let's see what he could do. Now, we try to move. That was a little strange last week. I wonder if that's kind of what he's trying to do here. We couldn't really tell from the angle that we had last week. That, that might be what he's trying to get at. I really have no idea what he's trying to do. It looks like it might be a standard popper attempt, but kind of getting it on the right side so that he can maybe get it on one wheel, do something wild with it. But it doesn't really give you any kick, just like that. I don't know what he's trying to do there, but it's really not 
I don't want to say it's not well thought out because I believe it is, but I don't think he... I think he's overestimating that ramp's height, which is too bad. But if anyone can take the lead after having a bad first attempt, it's Camden Murphy. Because if you throw down a nail, a nailing... Uh, if you nail your second hit, then you could take the lead. He's got the stoppy working, moonwalking it now. He's broken the nose. Gonna need some surgery on that. He's balancing it right there in the crevice of the step up. And now walking it all the way down on the front two wheels on one wheel and putting her down. There you go. There's your move of the night. What a great move there from Camden Murphy. And giving a little rev while standing up. That might get close. Score to beat, still belonging to Soldier Fortune. Let's find out the score for Dragonoid. It's enough. 8.989. It's going to put him in first place currently. And I think that's a good number. I really do. I, I'd say that's pretty fair for what he did. I don't think it'll be able to get him a win, but if he gets some luck behind him, he might be able to get one tonight. But Chris Kohler and Monster Mutt is up next, and we know what he can do in the skills challenge. Always a man who loves to do his bicycles. Let's see if he can nail one here and get a wild move. Bicycling it, keeping it balanced on the right side, trying to get it closer to the right side. Ooh, but that little ramp kicked him over maybe before he wanted to, but that was a nice long bicycle there. I feel bad for drivers like Chris Kohler who rely on bicycles to get higher scores because Chris Kohler, one of the best bicyclers, if not the best in the sport, but it doesn't get the amount of points that you really want to see because it's such a difficult move, but the standard casual fan doesn't know how difficult it is to do. Doing another bicycle here, putting it on the sidewalls. That's how you increase the points a little bit, putting it on the other side, but he overdoes it a little too much. And Monster Mutt is over. Two good moves. I don't know if it's going to be quite enough to take that top spot. It is not. 8.129. Snapdragon Stadium fans not loving the bicycles nearly as much as Chris Kohler would have liked. Which will bring out David Alford and Velociraptor, another man who likes to do the bicycle. I don't think he's tried any yet on this series. He's bound to at some point, maybe going for a donut right now, which he is. Pretty good at doing donuts, and he's got it in a pretty good spot. Got some speed going. Keep that puppy spinning, David Olfer. He didn't keep it spinning for too long. That's that's the end of the run. I that's that's probably not going to get much over. Yeah, that's not a. Unfortunately, when you're coming out that late in the competition, doing a donut is never going to get you the points you want. But you'll have to settle for eighth place. Next competitor is the four-time World Finals champion, and you're defending Monster Jam World Finals High Jump champion. I somehow have not mentioned that yet this year <laughs> in any of his runs. Ryan Anderson, son of a digger. I think the main reason why is because that high jump championship was so overlooked because of how muddy it was, which is such a different competition. And unfortunately, it just didn't... Uh, it didn't stick with the fans as much as the other competitions did in terms of memory. Looks like he's going for a maximum moonwalk. Alright. Walking it on the front two wheels. Now he's moonwalking it. Something I've noticed plenty of times with Tom Mentz doing this move is that unless you walk it for like a minute straight as he sets it down, it's really not that exciting. You know, it's like it's not that hard once you get it up on the front two wheels. Just balance it there. I mean, I'm not saying it's easy. I could never do it. But it just for whatever reason, it's, it's kind of like bicycles. It doesn't look as thrilling as doing something else. You know, like hitting a bicycle to moonwalk or... You know, a really killer stoppy and moonwalking it up and over the ramp. But he, it's a good way to establish yourself and get a good score from the casual fan as he goes for a bicycle here. Got the kick on it. Not a ton, but he kind of got it angled out. Now he's got it on the sidewalls, but he didn't get it in gear enough or in time to be able to get it on the sidewalls. He hit the gas a little too late when it already caved in. The truck is over. It's a 7.907. 
Ryan Anderson is not having a great start to the season so far, but there is a ton of time to make that up. But this man that's next up, he has. Adam Anderson and Gravedigger, your runner-up in the racing competition tonight. He's been in the final round of all three racing competitions. He's been great in skills. He had that wild skills move last week where he almost did a front flip. And now today he's here in San Diego hoping to have similar results to keep him not only towards the top of the point standings, but put him atop the point standings. It's jammer time, dragging the backside and slapping it. A good slap wheelie there for Gravedigger. I know I've said it so many times on this channel, but I love watching Adam Anderson do skills runs because he isn't going to just do a stoppy. That's the thing that I think Monster Jam expected with skills runs is that drivers would do something different every time, but it didn't turn into that. It turned into pretty much every driver would have two or three moves that they kind of do every time out. And it just kind of takes away from the fun of it, you know? Whereas Adam Anderson's doing something different every time. Look, he might be going for a stoppy right now. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know. But, you know, Adam Anderson is, is he gonna hit this in reverse? What? It didn't do anything like he wanted to, but I know what he was getting at. He was going to try and do a reverse somersault. Sadly, he kind of gassed it a little too much, but I like the thought. I like the idea, and that's why I love watching Adam Anderson go, because you don't know what he's going to do. It gets a little repetitive when you know, all right, here comes Tom Mentz. He's going to do two oh, yeah. stoppies. Adam Anderson, you're like, what is Adam going to cook up today? Unfortunately, though, it puts him in eighth place. But with him being in eighth place right now, Mike Christensen and Vendetta who won racing, if he has a good skills run, he might have a shot at winning the overall event championship today. He's already in first, and if he can get in the top five in skills and maybe the top four in freestyle, you might be looking at your overall champion tonight right here. He hits the jammer, sets it down. Oh no, no slap wheelie at all. Oh man. Well, there goes all of that. But you never know, there's always a way to turn it around, and it looks like he might be going for a stoppy here. He knows he has to do something. He's like, I, I want to win this overall. Mike Christensen isn't playing around. He's not just here to just hang around. He wants to win, you know, and that's a big thing for him. He sets down a little stoppy there for his two hits. And Vendetta will end off the skills challenge right there. Is it going to win? Absolutely not. The scores of 5.713. That'll put him in 10th. And yeah, there goes all overall championship hopes. So Camden Murphy, Bakugan Dragonoid is your skills challenge winner. I said it at the time, if he gets lucky, he might be able to win skills. He was able to win skills. And that's, that's all you need right there for Camden Murphy. That's a big boost in the points. And right now he is obviously going to be a large favorite to win that overall event championship. And now it's freestyle time. And the man who finished off skills will lead off freestyle. He is your racing winner tonight in San Diego event number one, Mike Christensen in Vendetta. Man, I bet when this lineup was made, nobody ever expected Mike Christensen to be coming off a racing win tonight. That's why, that's why it's like when he's coming out first in freestyle, you know, it's like, man, probably not going to have won anything, so it's not like you have a big guy in the point standings going out first, but you know, Mike Christensen had a real shot at winning the overall today, but his skills points ended up really hurting him, so that's obviously out of the question. He only has 14 points, no, 15 points on the day. It's just not going to cut it. It's not terrible, but it's not going to get him an overall event championship. If he wins freestyle, maybe, but highly unlikely. But regardless, we still get to look at this beautiful truck for a good two minutes more. Nice jump off of the car stack. Oh, a hard landing there, but he was able to keep it smooth. Thankfully, that ramp kind of caved in on him and it allowed him to just drive off. Nice little slap wheelie there. Didn't have much air on it. Oh, yeah, good jump over the step up. The step up looks a little bit less steep this week. I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but it definitely doesn't look like it's as big as it was last week. I think part of the reason why is because it was so big you just couldn't see much of anything. 
on that other side of the track, and you really kind of need to. Another hit at that jammer, he finally gets the slat wheelie he's been trying to do all night. This Red Line Oil sponsored Vendetta truck won racing tonight. Now going for a possible freestyle win. He hasn't done a backflip yet this year either. He probably would have gone for it had he placed in the maybe the upper half of skills, but I don't think we're going to be getting one. All right. Well, back-to-back -back weeks, the announcer jinx has worked because he's doing a backflip. <laughs> Mike Christensen under-rotates it, bounces it off the nose, but he's all right. How about that? Mike Christensen Vendetta whipping out a backflip. <laughs> okay. It's only week two. Mike Christensen's here to play this year. I said it last week. I want to see what this guy can do in 2024. So far, he's off to a roaring start, going for the donut. He's gonna. He's really doing everything he can to set himself up for a possible overall tonight. No better way to do that than that freestyle right there. A good freestyle, tossed in a backflip, had a nice donut at the end, and an 8.596 as the score. That is good. Probably will finish him in the upper half. A great night here for Mike Christensen. Obviously his best he's had in 2024. A great day. I mean, just a great day for Mike Christensen. A happy day for a Monster Jam super fan like me to see a man like him have the night that he did. Up next in Monster Jam Freestyle, it's Caleb Blood, Soldier Fortune. Had herself a good skills run. I think she ended up probably, I think she finished second in skills, which, I mean, the way skills went, I've got no problem with that. She really had the second best run. No one really, no one did anything good in skills. It was a very bad skills challenge competition. And that's kind of the problem goes back to what I was saying in Adam Anderson's run. Everyone's doing the same thing over and over again. That just kind of lends itself to more boring runs. You got to try and change it up. And thankfully, Kayla Blood, while her two moves are more of because she lost control, the truck was able to get it back. Still had a pretty exciting run. And that's what you need to do how you get some points and I'm sure she's thrilled about that second place in skills after the weekend she had last weekend big air there too she is on the road to a comeback and a nice combo Caleb Blood when at her best could certainly be one of the best Monster Jam female drivers out there she certainly gives Cynthia Gauthier a run for her money on the average day this year, we'll see if Lindsey Reed can maybe put herself in that conversation. And Jamie Sullivan, by the way, might also be in that conversation in Monster Mutt Dalmatian. After watching some of her stadium freestyles and her Superstar Challenge freestyle, and after week one, she was one point behind Weston Anderson, falling a little bit further behind after two weeks. But still, like, it's really anyone, any woman's game to be the unofficial best female driver in Monster Jam. But Kayla Blood is going to try and kind of establish herself as that here in 2024. She lines up for the backflip. Ooh, a hard landing. Is everything all right back there? I guess it is. The truck is still going. And now, oh, weird hit. Ah, bounces off the right side, and the truck was shut off before she could try and save it. That's too bad. You could see her RII light flashing there. They did shut her off. I don't love that. She certainly could have saved that. We'll see if it's enough to take the lead. I don't know if it will be. I mean, arguably, Mike Christensen's run was a little bit better. It should be close, though. There's your score to beat the score for Soldier Fortune and 8.646. It's your new leader. Not by much, so I'm not really upset about it. I really didn't have an opinion either way as to who should take the lead. So I have no problem with that. That'll bring up Joe Foley, El Toro Loco. Since the announcer's jinx has been working so well for me so far this year, I guess I'll keep tossing out there that I'm waiting for Joe Foley to have that magical moment, have a big wow moment. It's going to happen this year. It's just a matter of time. He's always been a pretty good freestyler. Last year had some wild freestyles. Some in Anaheim that were crazy. I think they, I'm pretty sure this series that he was on went to Anaheim three times last year. At the very least, they went twice. Nice nose pick into a wheelie. That was just textbook solid move right there. That was awesome.
big jump there. I feel like, I don't know if it's just me or if it's actually the case. I feel like the wheelbase on this truck is a little bit shorter, which means the distance between the wheels. It just feels like it's a shorter truck. Nice slap wheelie again, Joe Foley. Uh, I just, it just feels short. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I love to line it up next to the other trucks because it just, for some reason, seems like it's not the same length. And now Joe Foley can't see anything as the nose, the hood is in his face. Thankfully, flapped back down. They've got that hood cut straight down the middle. And another slap wheelie. Three in one freestyle. He is the slap wheelie man. He's really just a wheelie man, this freestyle. Thankfully, now he can see again. He's regained his vision. That's exciting. Also waiting for him to do a backflip this year. You know he will at some point. There we go. He got rid of the nose. I think it... Oh, he did a bicycle. I, don't, I didn't even realize he was doing that. But he did it, and it worked! Nice little bicycle. I think part of the reason why I think that the truck might be have a shorter wheelbase is because of the uh, giant bead locks. It might make it feel closer. He's going for the backflip now! I've jinxed... I, I did the announcer jinx again! Oh my! He under-rotated it, though. And it'll end on his lid. And he turtled that truck. Tough. But... It's still a pretty good ending to the run. It's not going to take the lead, but respectable from Joe Foley and El Toro Loco. The score for El Toro Loco is... A oh my god, it took the lead! 8.672! <laughs> Alright! Making me eat my words. Sure, I mean, uh, whatever. Here comes David Olford, Velociraptor. Hey, on the bright side, at least we aren't seeing a 9.8 for the first backflip complete of the night, because huh, if we had another weekend of that, I, I really think I would have had to ignore scores for the rest of the season after that. Thankfully, we returned back to normalcy, like I had said at the end of last weekend here in San Diego. These fans have seen plenty of Monster Jam in their day. These guys are veterans. They know what they're doing. The San Diego fans, they're great people. Good buddy of mine lives in San Diego, too. Great guy. So these San Diegoans, they know what they're doing. David Olford, he has not flipped this truck yet this year. This Velociraptor body is most definitely a little too clean for my liking. I'd like to see him... Oh, big air! I'd like to see him mess that thing up. Get a rollover in there tonight, toodles. Why don't we? Nice sky wheelie, just walking it down the back side of the ramp. Hey, Kermit the Frog is still in that window this week. I guess Wayne just gave him a Kermit for the year, because Wayne's not here. He was in San Antonio, I saw him. I also did the commentary on his video <laughs> yesterday. Also waiting for Too Tall to do a backflip. That'll happen at some point. He might be a guy to try the eight-pack backflip a little bit this year. What's wrong? No. Something's wrong with that truck. I think he's done. Ooh, yeah, something doesn't sound it. right in that motor. That's going to end his he run. <laughs> yeah, that truck just gave out right there. Too bad. I don't know what happened, but unfortunately, a 5.118, not a good day for Too Tall, but... Hey, there's plenty of more events on the docket for Velociraptor to get himself a good one. Here comes Jim Kohler and Avenger. I love the way Team Scream does their bead locks, where they don't just do it. They they use a different style of bead lock, and that's why they just they look so cool and so different. Jim Kohler, the two-time World Finals champion. It's been over a decade since his last World Finals Freestyle Championship. He almost had one in 2017, but then chaos ensued, and Leo Donald decided to do a front flip, and Neil Elliott decided to do a reverse backflip. So, 
that all went out the window. Nice jump from Avenger. He really hit the rev limiter on that one too. Holy cow. Yeah, his transmission is not okay. His gears are... He, I don't think he's stuck in first. He's been shut off. I don't think he's been stuck in first, but I feel like his gears might be wrong. His gear ratios might be a little bit off. Ah, eh, he might be in first. No matter what, something's not correct with that transmission. But he's still able to get pretty good air, which is why I don't think he's just stuck in first. He's getting enough speed. He's getting more speed than you would if you were just stuck in first. That's some big air. Oh, he clipped the step up. Hit the brakes, Jim! Save it! Oh, no! Oh, he, he hit the gas a little too soon! Man, that would have been... That would have been bonkers. 5.498. Too bad. Too bad for Jim Kohler and Avenger. That, that should have gotten a higher score than that. Give him a six at least. I mean, he had a, he had a wild finish. Come on! Next comes the prehistoric shark. Cory Rumble, Megalodon. Cory Rumble, some of you might forget, is the 2018 Showdown Champion. That's right. This is a former Showdown Champion right here. He earned his spot into the World Finals that year by winning the Showdown in Pirate's Curse. I was there. What a fun time that was. 2018 was such an underrated year for Monster Jam because it was coming off of 2017 and the World Finals that was... Insane. It was the last World Finals at Sam Boyd Stadium. Everyone was trying a little bit too hard. So everyone flipped over or broke too early. It was just too bad. Cord rumble. Two minutes on the clock. I like that the, uh, that little jump, whatever you want to call it, that he had just hit in the middle there is there for freestyle because it adds a little bit of a different pace because this is almost essentially in terms of obstacle wise oh my weird hit obstacle wise it's essentially just a jersey style racing track but throwing that pod in in the middle adds a little bit more flavor to it that i like whoa insane air oh no it flips him over but it doesn't matter he's back on all fours Unbelievable move from Megalodon. The truck's been... The truck has shut off. He hasn't been shut off. His RII light is not blinking. So the tech officials did not shut him off. The truck shut itself off. Oh yeah. Thankfully, he's refired. Man, that was a wild move. He's got a flat in the back right. He's going to try the backflip before it really goes flat. That might be weird. It's a little bit weird. Puts him on the side. Oh, no. He's on his lid. That could have been a real big extra layer of icing on what could have been a winning cake for Megalodon. The score to beat is the 8.672 from Joe Foley, El Toro Loco. Let's find out the score for Corey Rummel. The score for Megalodon is... It's oh, enough! 9.375, your new leader in freestyle, and well-deservingly so, Corey Rummel, the man who has had a great start to the year. He's had some real wow moments, had a fantastic freestyle in San Francisco with two wow moments. He's added another already! He's had more wow moments than anyone in Monster Jam in 2024 so far. But this man who's freestyling now, Adam Anderson, certainly could top him with a standard Adam Anderson freestyle. This man is a walking 9.5 in freestyle. Weird bounce low to start. That could have been the end of his run right there. Thankfully though, Adam Anderson is a professional Monster Jam driver. That's not gonna happen. Nice leap, big air. I love the hang time we're seeing tonight. This has been a night filled with some big leaps like that. I love when drivers just commit and they go all out. Now do we have a slap wheelie? Indeed we do. Adam Anderson, another great slap wheelier. He's the son of Dennis Anderson. He can do anything he wants in a monster truck. I mean, he's just phenomenal. 
More big air! He fully cleared half the track! Whoa! It sent him on the left side, but he just powered through it! Oh yeah! Even bigger air! The shock's absorbent enough that he's able to keep going in a little bicycle! And a stoppy?! Adam Anderson just threw it into a stoppy out of nowhere! Heck yeah! He's going for the win now, getting some more big air. The truck is just never landing flat, but it doesn't matter. Not time for a backflip yet. Oh man, Adam Anderson is having a doozy of a year in freestyle. This has been... I, we're two and a half freestyles in for Adam Anderson in 2024, and I already think he's going to win the championship in freestyle this year. He is hitting everything from a different angle, hitting it hard, hitting it fast, not landing straight, and he's able to keep going and put on more incredible moments. Going for the backflip now. Will he nail it well? Oh, no! Can he save it? Oh, no! He dug himself into the ground like a top. Man, that could have been a great freestyle and probably would have won had he landed the backflip. It's going to be close. Megalodon, your current leader, the score for Gravedigger is barely enough. A 9.407. Two great freestyles. Both of them equally deserving of being the top spot, and Gravedigger takes it over. We've still got a couple trucks left to freestyle. Camden Murphy, Bakugan, Dragonoid is next. You might be wondering why Gravedigger came so early in freestyle. That's because the freestyle order is reverse order of how they placed in the last freestyle competition. Adam Anderson, you might remember, was dealing with some truck problems last weekend in the last event. He had a locked planetary, really couldn't do much, so he placed a little bit lower. So right now, he's in first place, but there's a lot of heavy hitters to come. Ryan Anderson, Camden Murphy, Colt Stevens, even Barry Musauer. It is not a win for Adam Anderson just yet. He's going to need what Camden Murphy had in skills, and that's a lot of luck for the rest of this competition. He's going to basically need a bad freestyle competition from now on, which nobody wants. You also have to keep in mind the top two spots in Gravedigger Megalodon have not landed their backflips. They had some wow moments in there and failed the backflip. So a good run with a solid, uh, maybe a decent moment in there with the backflip probably will take the lead. Good slap wheelie from Dragonoid. Little combo too. And make it a three. Camden Murphy has a very similar driving style to Tristan England. The way that I'm watching him, that he kind of has that crab walk. I should say Tristan England has a similar style to him, but because we're watching Camden drive, it's better to say it the other way. But yeah, both of them love to use that rear steer to go around turns. They love crab walking it. And when I watched uh, Tristan this past weekend in San Antonio, that's really, I'm noticing they have very similar driving styles. And it makes sense. They came up in the same exact year, so... Actually, I think Camden Murphy might have been the year before. Doesn't matter. He's going for the backflip. Oh, yeah. He got the backflip to Moonwalk now. Last week, I said it wasn't going to count. Oh, man, but I think he just lost all rear power. He did. He, I think he completely broke the differential in the back, but it doesn't matter. He, what was that? What was that? He has only front wheel drive, and he just did a, a freak of nature move. He is putting his foot to the floor. He's going to kill his transmission, kill his motor. He doesn't care. He only has one wheel drive. He has one wheel drive. That front right wheel is the only thing spinning, and he is still going. Camden Murphy, Bakugan Dragonoid is going berserk. And they shut him off finally. <laughs> We've had enough. Holy cow, Camden Murphy is having a year so far. Who's gonna get the lead? Your score to beat, 9.407 from Adam Anderson. This better take the lead or I'm gonna be really annoyed. The score, oh. not enough! 9.390. Oh, that is, that's horrible. That's, oh, come on. Oh man, that is really unfortunate. You know what?
He's gonna be he's he's my new leader for run of the week just because of that freestyle of the week. Man! That was spectacular. I thought we had gotten out of San Francisco, unfortunately. The ghost is still haunting us. Here comes Bari Musauer and Zombie. Man, I'm bummed about that. Camden deserved that freestyle lead. He really did. You know what? A good way to fix that is to have a, a driver do even better and to take the lead, and then it doesn't matter. As long as the person that deserves to win freestyle wins, that's all I care about. Will it be Bari Musauer? He hits the jammer. A nice slap wheelie, dragging the tailgate. Bari had some killer freestyles last week. It was a weird weekend of freestyle in San Francisco. The first night, there was nothing good that happened at all. Adam's freestyle run, which I did give the Arizona Motorsports Junkie freestyle of the week, um, was really the only good thing that happened. But Bari and a few others had some killer moves in the second day. Ooh, baby! Oh, no! I saw that coming the second he got on the sidewalls. Oh, man! Oh, he almost saved that thing. That would have been insane. Ooh, he's on fire, too. Let's hope the tech officials, uh... Let's hope the tech officials have their fire extinguishers ready to go today. It's not gonna be enough. 6.158. Not... Not... You know, not a bad score. That's really what you'd expect. Next up in freestyle, it is Colt Stevens' Thunderorus. Nice air. I forgot who won freestyle in San Francisco last weekend. I mean, I see that Ryan's probably going to be going last. But if I remember right, I don't think he won freestyle, which is why I'm wondering. And I, for some reason, can't seem to type on my phone as I'm looking it up. I'm typing in mom. I, ah, I'm having problems. Colt Stevens Thunderorus had a great move last weekend in San Francisco. It was a really stellar, wild flip over. Nice jump there too. Little wheelie out of it. Oh, Zombie won freestyle in both events. That's why. All right, nice air from Colt Stevens. So that means that we're going to have back-to-back -back freestyles in which Camden Murphy got robbed out of a freestyle win. Man, that sucks. Whoa! Big Air! Thunderorus! The prehistoric T-Rex! Flying! Colt Stevens, again, your defending World Finals freestyle champion is... Having a decent run, but I mean, look, Colt Stevens has never been a guy who's going to tear it up all 120 seconds. Very similar to Todd the Duke. I would compare the two heavily. They put down about 60 seconds of just solid freestyle. Then they start to turn it up a little bit, getting big air, throwing in a backflip. We might be going for the eight pack. Nobody has hit it so far this year. Go for it, Colt. Yes, the first eight pack backflip on a stadium of the year, and it's perfect. Why is nobody hitting it? It is the easiest backflip you can land. It really is. I remember when the mini flip became a thing. That was like five years ago already. And that thing took over the nation in Monster Jam. Nice slap wheelie. Hi, Colt. All right, he's... Ooh, he almost started driving <laughs> while being unbuckled. There he is. Colt Stevens, everyone. Give him a good old raw. Oh yeah, beating his chest. We gotta get Colt Stevens in Donkey Kong, because he would fit really well <laughs> with his chest bumping. I, I like that. Score to beat 9.407. That shouldn't take the lead. It wasn't it was a good run, but probably an 8.9 if I had to guess. Maybe an 8.8. Eight. Probably like 9.0. Alright, 9.15. Not bad. I don't know why people are booing. That wasn't the best run of the night. What what are you complaining about? All right, there's one competitor left in Monster Jam Freestyle. It's Ryan Anderson, son of a digger, and it's either going to be his brother, Adam, winning freestyle, or him. Did they pin him into his spot with Dragonoid being there? I think he's... Okay, he was, like, stuck for a second. That was weird. He couldn't drive forward. It was almost like he was stuck on Dragonoid's back wheel. That was weird. 
But he's free. He's been let free. Lining up for his first hit of his freestyle. Nice jump. Gotta love when Ryan Anderson starts off with good hang time. The only competition Ryan has won so far this year in two and two-thirds events is one racing. That's it. He has competed in eight competitions up until this point. He's only won one of them. Big air there, though. And I'd say right now he's got a pretty open door. His brother Adam with a 9.4. Not a super high score. And if he can really put down a Ryan Anderson freestyle, should be pretty easy. Yeah, big air! Some of the biggest air of the night, if not the biggest air of the night. Turning it around, doing it from this side. Not as much of air, but still lining up and getting big air again. Not tons of time eaten up in this run yet either. Probably right around the one minute mark. So he's got plenty of time to really turn it up. Nice combo. Oh, the truck just kind of pogoed right there in place. What it is, I just feel like a little bit of the extra momentum, the oomph that Ryan Anderson normally has has just not been there this year. That's big air though. Oh no, he hits the center ramp again. Can he save it like Megalodon? Yeah, he can. The same exact move. He's been shut off too. I can't tell if it was by the RII. That one probably was. That was also a harder hit. Much harder hit. Oh no. It is over for Ryan Anderson. That is the end of his freestyle. A tough break. I don't think that's going to be able to take the lead or the win. We'll find out, though. The score to beat 9.407. The score for Son of a Digger is an 8.786. That is a pretty good score for what he should have gotten. I'd say that's pretty fair. We're not done. Chris Kohler has a free... Why is Chris Kohler coming out last in freestyle? I don't know, but he is out here and he's ready to roll. I'm out with big air right away. So Adam Anderson hasn't won freestyle yet. Because Chris Kohler still got a freestyle. I completely forgot. I'm not used to him coming out this late, but I'm here for it. We ball. Is he going to cross-thread that thing? You bet he is. Chris Kohler did a lot of cross-threading last week, already doing it again this week. Ooh, that truck is really popping heavily. Don't know why, but obviously not working to perfection. Ooh, yeah! A little stoppy? He could have really thrown that into a moonwalk there, but... Didn't quite execute it. Yeah, that truck is really straining a lot. Popping, backfiring as it goes. This ain't a two-step competition, Chris. You're just, you're just freestyling. Man, that thing is popping like crazy. I can only imagine how loud it was in the stadium. That thing is, that is one unhappy puppy. Okay. Kept it on all fours. Fitting little dog reference there, unintended. Cross-threading. Is he going for the backflip? Yes, he is. Carrying a lot of speed up to it. Locks his brakes up. That was the most perfect backflip we've had of the year. Off the backflip ramp. That was great. Nice air. Now it seems like the transmission's giving out too. Might just be the motor giving out, but regardless, <laughs> this monster mode truck might just pass away at the end of this freestyle. Whoa! Flipping the dog over and it ends on its lid. A hard crash to end off the freestyle run and, <clears throat> excuse me, to end off Monster Jam freestyle tonight. It's not going to be enough. The score is an 8.961, which means that Adam Anderson in Gravedigger is your freestyle winner tonight. I don't know. I still think that Camden Murphy and the Bakugan Dragonoid deserved it, but Adam Anderson also had a good run. But man, 
what a start to the year that Adam Anderson is having here in 2024. It is just all working for him this season so far. Let's find out who your overall event champion is, shall we? With 11 points in racing, 5 points in skills, and 12 in freestyle. Well, you know what that means with the 12 in freestyle. He's your freestyle winner tonight. It's Adam Anderson in Gravedigger, your overall event champion tonight in Snapdragon Stadium. Let's let him announce it. All right. Well, now that it's official, Adam Anderson in Gravedigger, your overall event champion. Look, it's Chris Kohler. Solid event so far to start off. Uh, not so far. Solid event in general in San Diego. I like the way that San Diego is starting off. Kayla Blood had herself a good day. Definitely a very good start to 2024 for Stadium Championship Series West. There's still one more event for that. Let's find out what's to come here on the channel commentary-wise. So there you have it, your upcoming commentary schedule. Tomorrow we go back to San Antonio for the Sunday event, and then on Sunday we will have San Diego returning back with their Sunday event. And then we will cycle in to the next week of commentaries. Next week on January 25th, we'll go to Houston's event from this weekend, which is actually when this commentary is releasing tomorrow night. So, so much more to come here on the channel. The upcoming commentary schedule right there, all times in Eastern time. It was a great event, solid commentary. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you all in the next one.